Okay, so I suggest that we go through a quick overview of the GS1 system and the GMDN in order to really highlight the main differences and also the interaction between both and uh, with a particular focus on the implementation of unique device identification requirement worldwide. So what is UDI, so this unique device identification system based on identifiers, it's uh, made of different components and the key one is a unique device identifier, which is a series of numeric or alphanumeric characters that are created in order to globally and uniquely identify medical devices. This system is based on inter internationally recognized standards for coding and for identification. Only regulated medical devices are covered by this requirement, but as you know, this covers a wide range of products, wheelchairs, implants, and syringe, for example. Well, GMDN is um, a naming system, the, the global medical device nomenclature. Nomenclature means naming system. Um, it's based on, based on an international standard, and it's used to help um, give standardized names to medical devices. We know that they are often given special names by manufacturers or different clinical users um, refer to medical devices in their own local language. So uh, we, we're trying to standardize the name so that um, someone who manufactures a medical device in one country can um, uh, understand and identify that same device in, in, an, in another country where their, their customer is based. Um, so it's used primarily uh, to exchange data between manufacturers, regulators, and health authorities of hospitals. Um, also used to track uh, problems or opportunities that may be you know, available when, when using metal devices, what we call vigilance. Um, also supporting inventory control, so you know how much of a certain type of product is available to use, and to support uh, the purchasing process to identify the type of product you're looking for. So that's what GMDN is. Continuing on definitions. So in the UDI context, you always find, or very often, close by GMDN and GS1. And GS1 is a neutral, non-for-profit organization with the purpose of developing standards. We are member-driven, we have a global office, but also local offices in many countries around the world. And our standards are used to identify product, to mark the product, and to also exchange information on these products around the supply chain, but also sometimes, and that's the case with UDI, with regulators. Trying to connect the dot and to put uh, the GS1 system Together with the UDI system, as I said, UDI is related to regulated medical device and the framework which is globally defined for the unique device identification system is divided into three components. The first one, the blue one here on the slide, is the UDI number. The UDI number is made of two parts, the one related to the device and another one related to production identification. That blue part, the number, must be captured into machine-readable and human-readable format. And this is the pink part that you see here on the screen. And that barcode, together with a human-readable translation of the information encoded in the barcode, must be applied on every packaging level of the device, except the logistic unit, and in some cases, also the device itself. Think about surgical instrument. In that case, the UDI will be captured also on the device. And last but not least, this unique device identification number must be also registered in what we call a UDI database, which is hosted and managed by the regulator and which is enabling manufacturer to register information related to the unique identification of their device for a specific jurisdiction. So these three components are exactly the same as the three pillars of the GS1 system of standards, 
identify the blue part with the different keys and application identifiers that are provided by the GS1 standard, capture this information in a machine readable format and a human readable format with different type of barcodes or RFID technology. And last but not least, share this information among the supply chain and with regulators using in that context of UDI, a standard called GDSN. And if we go back to the relationship with GMDN and also trying to draw the line with the classification of devices, GS1 is only related to the standardization of the globally unique identifier, so the UDI, for example, and the GTIN in that case, whereas the classification is designed at the national level by the competent authorities, and that's related to the risk posed by a device. And the nomenclature code, like, for example, the GMDN, is developed by third party organization and is aiming at identifying a family of product or a specific group of product. Yeah, that's a very good point. And uh, we can see here, this slide really demonstrates the relationship between the UDI, uh, the GTIN and the GMDN term. So we can see on one side of the screen, we just have one product has got a barcode, which is the um, AIDC part, the, the barcode is applied to the packaging by the manufacturer, and that unique number then goes into a database. Um, on the other side, we can see that there's three products. Uh, they look quite similar. So let's say they're the same type of product. Uh, they're made by three different companies. Uh, and uh, because they're made by three different companies, they have three different UDI numbers. And that's how you can tell that um, you know, that particular product is from a particular supplier. But because they're so similar, they share the same GMDN description, same GMDN code. And that's how we uh, group products uh, so that the different products with different UDIs are in one particular GMDN family of products. So as I said, the UDI DI in the GS1 term is called a GTIN, a global trade item number. But GS1 is not the only issuing agency for unique device identifier as per the requirement of, uh, for UDI globally. You also have HIVIC with their own version of the GTIN and ICCBBA related to blood and human tissues um, devices. And what is important is the shortcut is easy to make and to refer to UDI as barcode, but really the barcode is just the carrier. And the important part of the UDI is really this identifier, which is enabling you to make sure that your device is globally and uniquely identified um, among the supply chain, sorry, but also for use at point of care. Going back to what Mark had presented, if we want to link the pieces together, again, for each manufacturer, the requirement based on UDI regulation is to assign a UDI number made of a device identifier together with the relevant production identifiers to each packaging level of a device, including the device itself. And in addition to that, in some cases, and that's only in Europe today, the manufacturer must also assign another identifier called the basic UDIDI and for GS1, the GMN, in order to um, store information in the database and to group product together, but that's still related to the identification of the product. And that's different from the purpose of using the GMDN nomenclature. And Mark is going to tell you what it's about. Yes, yeah, so uh, we've spoken earlier about the relationship between the, the, the UDI, identifying the individual product, and the GMDN, which groups those products together on the basis of the type of product they are or their function. Uh, and uh, if you look in the, the GMDN database, you'll see something like 25,000 different types of products described. 
uh, and, and we describe them using generic language. So we, you know, they're not specific, specific to one particular manufacturer. We try and avoid proprietary descriptions or, um, you know, enclosing on, um, on, you know, sensitive areas which might be, so, it, so a product might only be available from one supplier. So we work very closely with the manufacturers to describe their new products as they enter the market to make sure they're captured. And um, then we publish that data and you're able to get the GMDN database free of charge so that you can download this data and, and look at these descriptions independently of the, of the manufacturer. Uh, but we would expect normally for the GMDN to be selected by a manufacturer and supplied to you as a customer with their other product information. So that's how you would normally get the, G the GMDN data from uh, your supplier. We keep on referring to this database and um, to really reinforce the relationship and the combination of the unique device identifier together with the nomenclature for a medical device. I think that's uh, one of the concrete example of uh, implementation. And if you see on the right part, I think it's an unmated slide. So Noran, you have to click again. The part related to the GS1 identification and the globally unique identification of one specific device and in the column in the middle, if Nuhan clicks again, you will see uh, the nomenclature, which is related to the grouping of that device and to make sure that we call a syringe a syringe in any different part of the world, because we are using that code, which is providing a globally unique reference for that type of device. So on one side, a unique identifier, and another one, uh, a unique denomination or definition for a device. If I could uh, just add that, and then that just, just a, 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 of interest to me is that obviously this model, which has been implemented in the US uh, by the US FDA, is one which is recognized globally as the right kind of system to implement because it uses UDI systems, which are easily available to manufacturers, and it uses the GMDM, which is easily available uh, to manufacturers and to you as, as users of the data. So um, we would promote together this type of approach to these UDI databases, and, and, and you may create your own system, or you may use data which is supplied from other, other organizations like the US FDA. But we both support this model uh, going forward as the most efficient way of delivering this data which can help identify the product and name that product in a standardized way. These are our contact details and really don't hesitate to knock at our door should you need any further information or if you have any questions. Thank you. Thanks for listening.